and Oscar's special guest, Fred Astaire. But I quit. Uh, this is Oscar Levant, the irreligious Billy Graham of Los Angeles. And uh, I'm worn out and I can't think, talk, or breathe. And uh, what an irresistible combination of events. Uh, this is a momentous occasion for me, and I'm a little hysterical about it. And before I go on, I want to present my beautiful, lovely, and, uh, should I say, uh, poised, tolerant wife, June Levant. There's a play by George Bernard Shaw called a Doctor's Dilemma, in which a character named Dubedat, uh, reminds some people of me, and you'll be happy to know that he dies in the third act. And before he dies, this is his last utterance. He says, I believe in Michelangelo, Velasquez, and Rembrandt. And these three great genius painters uh, is the simplest, unprepossessing way I can present my marvelous, historically wonderful guest, the greatest song and dance man in history, a charming, an incomparably charming man, and a great, great, great artist, Fred Astaire. Thank you very much. Hello, Hello. Thanks ever so much, Oscar. That's, uh, that's too much, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, feel that it wasn't enough. Oh, no, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> Will you forgive me for one moment? Uh, Miss Ethel Barrymore, uh, through an emissary, Herbert Byers Swope, Jr., who is listening in tonight, I'm quite honored. She, I think, listens in. We paid her a minor tribute with Hedda Hopper last week, and she asked if I would play a little Bach for her tonight, and that's the only distraction we'll have. A little Bach? Bach, Bach. Oh, Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> so I shall play. I didn't know what to play. I haven't had time to play Bach, and my daughter, Lorna, suggested I play a little bit of the Italian concerto. You're a great friend of Ethel's, aren't oh, you? Oh, yes, I am indeed. And you speak to her in case you have a phone. Yes, I do. She heard you last week, and she uh, said she enjoyed it very much when you played uh, Chopin, uh, when Hedda Hopper was here. Well, she wants Bach. I'll play a little of the Italian concerto. <laughs> You have no peer. You've introduced and inspired more great songs than anybody of our time, including Gershwin, Kern, Berlin, Humans. Who did I leave out? Well, I don't know. Cole Porter. Cole Porter. I always leave him out. It's a terrible. I'm sort of unconscious. You don't mind. I mean, I'm listening to these. You know, these 
very wonderful compliments tonight. You know me. I don't... Can I... It's a good <laughs> Can I recall the first time I saw you, which was in Lady Be Good, and the first four bars I ever heard or saw you, I was sitting in the gallery. It was the first show George and Ira Gershwin collaborated on, book show. Mm -hmm. And you did this. If you hang on to me, while I hang on to you, we'll dance into the sunshine out of the rain forever and a day. My sister Della. Your sister Adele sang that. Yeah. Well, I sang it with her. I am suddenly mute. I just want to announce <laughs> that this is a spectacular that is conceived, uh, written, and ad-libbed, rehearsed by me, and even the set is designed by me. These two stools on which Mr. Stair and my wife are sitting are from my bar, because... <laughs> <laughs> Your bar? Well, we, I don't drink, but Oscar, we have a bar. Oscar's bar and grill, it's... <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, Channel 13 is a Trappist monastery in disguise. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> the song that evokes the deepest memory for me was a song by George and Ira Gershwin uh, from a picture called... It's, I'm trying to refer to you. Can't take that away from me. You talk about it, would it? Oh, oh, uh, oh, yes. Um, wait, wait a minute. Um, Oh, it was, it was, uh, I never remember what pictures these Shall we dance? Shall we dance? That's right, that's right. With Ginger. That's right. The ubiquitous Ginger. She was always with you for many years. Uh, I'm very glad to Incidentally, you it also was in a picture that I was in, uh, it, which starred uh, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. Uh, camera, move in. It's my name, not Fred's. Fred's <laughs> is always a big name. Mine is always featured. Can you see it? Take an hour, it's okay. <laughs> okay. The way you wear your hat, the way you sip your tea, the memory of all that. No, no, they can't take that away from me. The way your smile just beams, the way you sing off. The way you haunt my dreams No, no, they can't take that away from me We may never, never meet again On the bumpy road to love Still I'll always, always keep the memory of The way you hold your knife the way we dance till three. The way you've changed my life. No, no, they can't take that away from me. No, they can't take that away from me. to breathe that time. That's the kind of a singer I am. I forget to breathe and I get stuck down You'll in the You'll do better not breathing than most people do. <laughs> Everybody's not breathing. I, uh, oh. This is one of those interruptions that is highly necessary in this uh, wonderful world we're living in. <laughs> and it's a wonderful product and a, a very charming man who does these announcements. Stand at Carl Lisi. Good evening. My name is Ehrman Pessis and I'm speaking for Standard Car Leasing, where you can get any Cadillac app of your choice by the year on a low monthly rental fee, which is much less in cost than owning your own car. Thank you. Again, will restore your confidence. Thank you, Mr. Levant. Mm -hmm. Crestview 4, 8822. You know that Christopher Isherwood is writing a poem with Crestview. What's the number? Well, I'm, I wrote a poem, too, for I don't want to hear your poem. I have no time. Mr. Isherwood, you'll pardon me. Uh, I'll discuss your poetic talents uh, some remote time. Uh, 
Uh, after the show, I'll apologize. Uh, I'm in a hurry because Mr. Stare, who usually gets $300,000 for an appearance, incidentally, it's his first appearance on television, as far as singing is concerned. And naturally, he chose me because he not only is not getting anything from me, not the $300,000, but he needs, uh, what's the name of that commercial we have? Executive toilet water. He has no after-shaving lotion, and he has enough time to go to a drugstore, and that's why he's here. <laughs> One other thing, Fred, about Barclays. Uh, it's being shown this week on KTTV, Channel 11, and if it's not on the night I'm on, look at it. I saw the uh, trailer. We were great in it. I liked it. I loved uh, the Barclays. It was swell picture. Joan, uh, tell about how Mr. Astaire came uh, to visit us about this show. Re yeah. Well, uh, yesterday morning, um, I was in bed, and I heard the... Wait, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was in bed, and I heard the, the, bell, the doorbell ring, and, and the maid was didn't show up yesterday morning. I broke her arm. I've had coffee in three days. And uh, Oscar was playing the piano. I heard him downstairs, so I put my robe on, and I ran downstairs, and I opened the door, and there was Fred Astaire, and he was singing The Way You Wear Your Hat. He was practicing it on the way in and out. On the doorstep. It was just so wonderful. Is that what you want me to tell? And I said, don't look at me. <laughs> Anyway, that's what he, uh, they can't take that away from him, the, your unmade face. Uh, <laughs> let's get on, uh, Fred. Oh. In that same show, the first show I saw was Lady Be Good. Did you sing this? Lady Be Good? Uh, no. No, uh, my sister Adele did that with, with Walter Catlett. Walter Catlett sang it. He was a wonderful comedian. Oh, yeah. Can right. you recall the way he sang it? Well, he was the old, uh... Oh, sweet and lovely. I mean, just like that. Do it, do it, do it. Do a few bars. Well, I, oh, sweet and lovely. Lady, I mean, I listen, you know, I listen, the pipes are bad enough. Now, let's not... No, that's wonderful. Now, he, uh... Oh, sweet and lovely. Lady, be good. Oh, lady, be good to me. I am so awfully misunderstood. So, lady, be good to me. Next. Next. Very good. 
Next. Next. My name is Cody Williams. <laughs> what's your name? Barney Kessel. We're doing... What's your name in that radio uh, television show? My name is Cody Williams. Oh, uh, tell, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Only the real uh, Cody Williams has to tell the truth. <laughs> uh, Fred, you may be miffed at what I'm going to suggest. You know, uh, Ira Gershwin told me last night that Sam Goldwyn, on kind of your presence here tonight, was going to look in. I know that's an overwhelming honor, but they're up. Uh, and he is a great old producer. He's the greatest pioneer producer left. He's a distinguished, wonderful producer who's had wonderful, magnificent pictures, and he survived every era. And uh, I know you know him well. He sure complained do. about your reluctance to visit lately. What? So I'm going to order you to do something. I'm going to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to imitate Mr. Goldwyn. You know, you appeared in the last two scores that George, and George Gershwin wrote, uh, uh, Shall We Dance in Damsel in Distress with Joan Fontaine. And there was one other score after he died, which was the Goldwyn Follies, which Mr. Goldwyn produced. And in this show, in this picture, was the last song George Gershwin ever wrote, which was Our Love is Here to Stay. And please, and I order you, try to do, not try, do an imitation of Mr. Goldwyn in, in the event he sang the song. He doesn't sing, as you know, but imagine yeah. this. But what, 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 may I get this? Sir? You want me to, to, uh, to give an imitation of Sam singing that song? This marvelous, oh, Oscar. wonderful Sam. Oh, please. Sam, help me. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> So I, I don't know the words. I have written now. Sam knows I love him very much, and uh, I know Sam has a great sense of humor. So Sam... We'll have to. Oh, Sam, please. I wrote these lyrics because right. uh, Mr. Sharon never has sung this song. I find it impossible to refuse anything Oscar asked me to do, so that's what... Uh, so, anyway. It's very clear. <laughs> Our love is here to stay, not for a year, but ever and a day. The radio and the telephone and the movies that we know may just be passing fancies and in time may go. But oh my dear, our love is here to say, huh? You know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> Together we're going a long, long way. I want to do good pictures, Oscar. In time, the Rockies may crumble, Gibraltar may tumble, they're only made of clay. I think I'll have a role for you in my next musical, Oscar. But our love is here. To stay. I'll call Jean Negalesco and we can play some croquet afterwards, huh? If you don't want to play croquet, we can play some gin. Oh, well, we'll see. Anyway, in time the Rockies may crumble, Gibraltar may tumble, they're only made of clay, but. Our love is here to stay. <laughs> wow. oh, you, you are the one. <laughs> Unfortunately, many of our audience doesn't know uh, the gregarious Sam Goldwyn because it's impossible to meet him. He lives uh, like a next king of Spain. Uh, we will now have Anderson... Uh, uh, for headaches, toothaches, and anything that I create by my being on the show. It's a cure for anything I do. What time do we go on? Oh. Uh, on the way into the studio, I drove Mr. Astaire down, and we walked in. The sole of my shoe uh, started to <laughs> flop around and flap around, and uh, it was surgically removed. But this is a memento. I'm going to send this to Adlai Stevenson uh, for him when he runs in 1960, and uh, he needs all the help he can get. <laughs> I hate to evoke sentimentality, but actually I like nothing better. <coughs> but a, a wonderful friend and a great man, a friend of Mr. Stairs Jr. and my own, is going to celebrate, I think as the songwriters say, he's going to hit 70th Street. You know who I'm talking about. Tell you. Irving? Yeah, yeah. Irving Berlin. 
Um, yes, his birthday is on the on the ninth, isn't it? Of May. May of May. Yeah. I'm going to hit Seventy Street and Broadway. Yeah. And uh, you're hitting. Uh, what? I'm, I'm hitting Herald Square. No, <laughs> Herald Square. <laughs> on, on the tenth. <laughs> the day it's following. Mr. birthday. No, I'm lying a little bit. We get up around C Columbus Circle. That's it. <laughs> Wow. That's it, right on the nose, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I'm at 59th Street. That's quite May a circle. I have to explain that to a few people. Don't live in New York. <laughs> well, what street is it? The songwriter is in Lily. 59th Street. Yeah, when you're 59 years old, you're on 59th Street. <laughs> and Mr. Berlin will be on 70th Street. And uh, <laughs> another birthday is May 6th. Uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, my mother made me crazy with her love for Tchaikovsky. And uh, fortunately, no, all right, that's enough about Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Uh, June uh, and Fred, on count of Mr. Berlin, I want to ask Fred to do a song. I don't think it was a big hit, the Change Partners in Dance, was it? Well, I think it was played a lot. It was It was always a, a, a favorite of mine. I, I think it's a marvelous lyric. You like it? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the whole tune and everything about it, I like very much. What picture was it? Oh, dear. Carefree, Here we go. Carefree. Carefree, that's right. June, uh, just before we go in, <clears throat> the Berlins were are very good friends of ours. Uh, just talk about Mr. and Mrs. Berlin a little. Well, uh, Oscar had known the Berlins for many years, and uh, when we got married, they were terribly sweet to me, and Ellen... Unlike uh, me, yes. Yeah, well, uh, no, but come, going to New York to live, and uh, Ellen Berlin is really a, a wonderful woman. She's very intelligent and writes extremely well, and I had enormous admiration and respect for her, and she used to give me lots of advice, which I took because um, uh, it was very good. And uh, they had three daughters, and... Uh, still have, I'm glad to see That's you. right. And uh, she did say, I remember when we first married, she said to me, Now, June, she said, Irving and Oscar should only have daughters. After all, they're not mechanical-minded, and they don't like to make little airplanes and, and kick footballs around, and it's very good for them to have daughters. And uh, so I took her advice, and we had three daughters. <laughs> and... Um, as a matter of fact, Irving was tr tried to be helpful, too, because he'd always uh, suggest names for the girls when they were born, and it always seemed to be the, the names of his own daughters that he'd suggest. And it was sort of a coincidence that our oldest daughter, their daughters are named uh, Mary Ellen, Linda, and Elizabeth. And uh, by coincidence, really, our oldest daughter is named Marcia, and our middle daughter is named Lorna. But by the time we had the third one, I was wildly independent, and I named her Amanda, which had nothing to do with... Actually, June wanted her to name all three Amanda, and I wasn't in favor of the name, and I said before Amanda, who's a wonderful little girl, before she was born, I said, even if it's a boy, you can call him Amanda. I was no problem. <laughs> yes, but, but the doctor said to me, when I, when, I, when I got a girl, he said, well, you didn't get the boy, but you got Amanda. Oh, Amanda's great. worth That's great. my daughters. I wouldn't trade for all the boys, although they would, but... Well, I mean, they should like boys. I don't happen to... Uh, uh, let's do... Uh, <laughs> There I go again, the trumpets blow. Must you dance, every dance, with the same fortunate man? Can't you see, you've danced him. Now, oh, once more, start. Must you dance? Every dance with the same fortunate man. You have danced with him since the music began. Won't you change partners and dance with me? Must you dance quite so close with your lips touching his face? Can't you see, I'm longing to be in his place. Won't you change partners and dance with me? Ask him to sit this one out, and while you're alone, I'll tell the waiter to tell him he's wanted on the telephone. Now you've been locked. In his arms ever since heaven knows when won't you change partners and then you may never want to change 
partners again. most important moment of tonight, a station break. They seem to think this is momentous, however. <laughs> such memories for me and you, of you, that I am unable to speak, which is the greatest public service anybody's ever done in this <laughs> Now, I'm going to ask you something, and I'm going to break my promise. You said you wouldn't dance, you wanted to relax. Is that true? Well, it isn't. I want to relax. There just isn't any place to dance, Oscar. You know, I mean, uh, I, I'd, I'd do anything for you, but I, I swear, you know, old Dad here, whenever a dance routine comes up, he uh, begins to fume and fret and worry, and I just don't want to look too bad. I'd do anything for you but dance tonight. You know. Well, I'm going to press on because at this moment, <laughs> what's the use of kidding? The whole world is waiting for this moment for you to dance, oh. and the whole world, as far as this station is concerned, goes as far as Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> you know that we're going to be recognized as the 49th state someday. Uh, anyway, please, please dance, and I'm going on my broken torn ligament knees to beg you. <laughs> I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. Oscar for you. Oh, really, I mean, uh, you know, this this was this was a, a lyric about a girl, or I sang it to a girl, a little girl named Ginger, and uh, I better start over again. And, and You know, uh, I was in a picture with you and Ginger, as I mentioned before, yeah. Barclays. Yeah. And you know, during that picture, the music... The Barclays? Barclays uh, uh, on Broadway. Bar hmm? The Barclays of Broadway. You're the first man who ever dared correct me in public. I <laughs> <laughs> a hard time getting it out. <laughs> but at any rate, if you remember, Ginger had this maternal compulsion, which I've never had since, uh, where she brushes the cigarette ashes and the dandruff, the only relic of middle age I have. Uh, and other uh, things uh, that seemed to accumulate on my clothes. And it annoyed me, and I once pushed her arm away. Uh, did she ever do that to you? Well, you mean brush? Oh, yeah, I, I always had a lot of dandruff, you know, and she... Uh, she <laughs> you are for those dandruff days. <laughs> I, don't, I don't brush you off. I, I run the vacuum cleaner over you. So. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject of you and Ginger, may I stand, uh, Mr. Flanagan, head of Channel 13? I want to relax. Uh, you know, the series of pictures you did with Ginger at Oak Hill are really have become a historical series. As a matter of fact, they're playing every museum in the world right now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, I would be very curious to know your opinion uh, of your favorite picture of that wonderful series. Well, my, my favorite... Uh um, it's hard to figure out favorites, you know. Each one that we we did, I always thought might have been the best one. I didn't know, but uh, looking back on it, I think maybe I like Top Hat the best. It might be the favorite. Of the By Irving Berlin. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, my favorite was Irene and Vernon Castle, the story of. Well, I, I, I must say I like that one, too. That was more serious story than uh, anything we, we did. That, what was your favorite, June? My favorite? Uh... Well, actually, I, I love all the Astaire pictures, but I think I'm slightly prejudiced. I, I preferred the Barclays of Broadway because you were in it. Yeah. Very nobly said. Uh, <laughs> that kind of adhesive loyalty. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, Makes you sick, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I'm rather pleased. I've never, I never heard you express uh, that kind of admiration before. <laughs> but we're a, on the air. <clears throat> it's quite an oasis in the world of criticism <laughs> that I live in. Uh, Anyway, what seriously is the favorite picture? Well, actually, I love Carefree because it was about a psychiatrist and, you know, what we've been through. <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Astaire played a psychoanalyst in this picture, and during the picture, he hypnotized Ginger Rogers, and for some peculiar reason, she seems unable to get out of that trance ever since. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm being, uh, naturally, uh, uh, joking, because, uh, I love Ginger, and, uh, it's too bad she doesn't know about it. Uh, 
She will, Oscar. She will. She already did. I took her out years ago during an earthquake. We went to see of the ice saying the theater rock, and she thought it was my fault. She never saw me again. That was 1933. But every time I took a girl out, something seismographic happened. Uh, what are we leading to? Uh, we're leading to the Riviera Convertible. Oh, I wish I could lie on it. Riviera Sofa, while we're at it, Walter Winchell's going to be my guest Friday at his insistence, I may add. And naturally, I'm quite honored. There was no, uh, I had no choice in the matter. And he's <laughs> quite dynamic and brilliant. He called me yesterday in a kind of dramatic fervor and said, I won't be able to appear on your show Friday. I said, why not, Walter? He said, I'm tracking down an unsolved murder. I'm flying out of town today. And I said, obviously, the murder is now in the, uh, the Riviera with Elsa Maxwell. And, uh well hidden, and any help this murderer can get from me, he'll get. But, uh, Walter knows I'm joking. If he doesn't know, he can ruin my career in one column. Uh, anyway, while Walter talks uninterruptedly for an hour and a half, Friday, I'll be lying on a Riviera convertible sofa. <laughs> Well, you know, this is a dilemma. I asked you to dance, did, and you didn't do it. We've been reminiscing about Ginger. And, That's right. Uh, uh, you, want, well, you want me to sing it? Sing it. I, I would be a thrill. I know some of the words, I think. Well, it makes no right. difference if you forget. You're not on network where they're so religious about such little trivial things. <laughs> uh, the fervor that goes in uh, to banality in network. Why do I say that? <laughs> I won't dance, don't ask me. I won't dance, don't ask me. I won't dance, madam, with you. My heart won't let my feet do things they should do. You know what? You're lovely. You know what? You're lovely. But oh, what you do to me. I'm like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. I feel so absolutely stumped on the floor. When you dance, you're charming and you're gentle, especially when you do the continental. But this feeling isn't purely mental. For heaven rest us, I'm not asbestos. And that's why I won't dance. Why should I? I won't dance. How could I? I won't dance. Merci beaucoup. I know that music leads the way to romance. But if I hold you in my arms, I won't dance. Now. <laughs> you evoke a fervor in me. I'll have to go to Lourdes. And take uh, and confess, become a saint. I'm so overcome. I'm so thrilled with you. Oh, uh, thanks. I really me. am. I really am. I, I, uh, I'm having an awful good time. I hope it looks all right. You know, I. I, <laughs> I want to oh, take a little rest. It's awfully modest. Talk to Joan for a minute, will you? While while I cry. <laughs> uh, June, you know, I uh, I saw you uh, dance. Uh, when you uh, were in the show, you know. Last year it was, a couple of years ago, you know. Even years ago with my uh, sisters? You went your sisters, the Gale sisters, the you poor Gale sisters, this? and you did something that was absolutely sensational. Uh, you stood out, of course. <laughs> but at the end, I watched, this, I watched this act, and I thought, my gosh, uh, you know, these gals are really good. And then all of a sudden, you all had canes. That's right. And uh, you put them down and all flipped over that way. That's right. right. There was the big finale. It was a smash. Did Absolute you? smash. I'm absolutely thrilled that you remember. Well, I really. wish you'd do it now. We, do we, it we, now. I, I <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, that was a great I can't do the cane trick anymore, but I keep the cane around. It's very handy for whacking Oscar over the head. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> She threw well, some liquor in my eyes Saturday. Oh, stop. I need pain and torture, and she can't. That's the only way I can drink. <laughs> she threw in my eyes. I thought I was blind, and I was rather happy, except for one thing. I have to learn the Shostakovich piano concerto in three weeks, and that's all I thought about. How will I read it? That's a heck of a way to get a plug in for the Shostakovich piano concerto. It's a fine way to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go? Oh, Fred, as long as you won't dance, I want to reminisce about the first number you dance to that I saw in Lady Be Good. I got the old Aurora hat for this The trouble is you have so many 
from whom to choose. If you should marry Tom, Dick, or Harry, life would be the book I'd become a monk. I've got the you don't know the half of it, dearie blue. I'd become a monkey. If you should marry Tom, Dick, or Harry, oh, life would be the monk. I'd become a monk. I won't play at all. Da, 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 da. I was in London. I was rather young. I was in my teens. I was working there. And uh, you were the biggest sensation in London. You were appearing in uh, Lady Be Good. I know you were a great friend of the Prince of Wales at that time, and also other distinguished titles. And you made an entrance into a nightclub, which was famous at the time, called the Kit Kat Club. And I never saw anybody so mobbed as you and your sister Adele. And, uh, huh? I must have been unconscious. I don't remember any mob. You don't remember any mob. <laughs> there was quite a mob, and they were all in white hat, top tails, and whatever it is. <laughs> what are the top hat, white sails, and... Uh, <laughs> That's close. Huh? That's close. <laughs> top sails? Huh? <laughs> oh, we'll now do a brief version. What do we do next? Here's the story of Vernon and Irene Castle. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about the castle, didn't we? Not much. No, we, uh, you, you mentioned that you liked the picture. Uh, wasn't he was a hero of yours, Vernon well, Castle. Well, uh, the, the castles, the Vernon Castles were uh, a great inspiration to uh, my sister and me as we were trying to get our careers going as these kids as we were. And uh, they were, the, I think they were the greatest, most potent influence in ballroom dancing of, uh, of any time. They, they started the whole craze, as I remember it. And I know that there were idols about it. So when I found myself doing that picture, I was kind of thrilled about that in their lives. And uh, I met Irene before that. And uh, incidentally, was she up, stunning? And, uh, oh yes, she was. Uh, I never met. I never met Vernon. He. Uh, you he, never did. No, he was killed before. But you helped uh, uh, Mrs. McLaughlin, Irene Castle, to put on an act subsequently after his death at the palace. Did she? She wanted. She wanted to go in vaudeville uh, with an act, and she had. Uh, uh, she wanted Billy Reardon. Uh, dancer to, to do the act with. So they asked me to put the, put the numbers on, so I did. It's kind of nice. You know? Before I forget uh, uh, the Lady Be Good uh, repertory that we just did, I think we finished it off uh, for tonight. Uh, is it true that George Grace would help you finish a dance routine in that show? Yeah. Tell about it. Well, um, I needed a closing step for one of the routines. As a matter of fact, I've got this in the book that I'm writing. And uh, so what did I have? How did I, I remember the whole thing. I got a doll. Uh, I, I didn't have a finished step with my sister and, uh, for this particular dance called Fascinating Rhythm. And uh, George was sitting at the piano playing for the rehearsals one day and uh, he stopped us and he said, wait a minute. Why don't you just do that step that you're doing now? Just move. Just move with it. You know, and he got up and then we were, I know we were doing something like that. I don't know. And he said, now move. I said, well, we're having enough trouble with it this way. He said, no, move. So we moved and we got off. It was, it was a good exit. You know, he could dance a little. Did you remember? Well, he, well, he danced like I played the piano, you know. Uh -huh. Not better? Well, he, no. <laughs> he impressed me with his dancing. You know, I told Ira last night, I didn't have any competitive feeling after I met George. He was so great and I was so inadequate that I was relieved of all competitive spirits. <laughs> and it's a wonderful thing to go through youth without that. 
I am not a member of Playhouse 90, where they think they're O'Neill and the GBS, and they're really not, and I won't go into it any further. Unless I'm urged, we'll now have a commercial of uh, some roughage by Kellogg, which is very nutritious and which has helped Frank Sinatra's career. Oh. You know it. Hydra Walker, they, uh... You like the, the set that I brought down for my spectacular? Uh... <laughs> you know, the man who just did the Paul Mall commercial said he didn't have to say this, but he would have had a job otherwise. But, uh, <laughs> let's go into some music before, uh, I get poetic. And, uh, I know one of my favorite songs is a little song. It, it isn't, it was in, uh, Top Hat of Berlin, and it isn't Chick to Chick, which I know is your favorite of that picture, but you promised to do the one I like best. Uh, isn't this a lovely day? Oh, I like that one, yeah. Do you mind? No, I do. Do you mind, Ted a bit? If no one else minds, I'll uh, tackle it. <laughs> Have we done this? Does anybody No, know? we haven't done it. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know, I've influenced your stream of conscious. <laughs> We're now doing a show without the elements of time and space. <laughs> We're floating in our own orbit. <laughs> Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? You were going on your way. Now you've got to remain. sun up high, though we're caught in a storm. And I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain pitter-patter, cause it really doesn't matter if the skies are gray. Long as I can be with you, it's a lovely day. response and please not for me but for him and he doesn't need it but he deserves it and thank you <laughs> i now have uh, to introduce a new commercial on our show and you know that's what we need uh but i'm very honored it's something i need very badly it's a jacuzzi whirlpool bath not to be confused with brancuzzi the sculptor which i also need uh, he's doing my head and and lobing lopping it off at the same time would you please tell the therapeutic uh aid that this uh Bad, as the world knows, I need one. Thank you. <laughs> not only can I not do with it, I can not only do with you, you're quite attractive. Forgive me, Joan, forgive me. <laughs> uh, I'm just gregarious, I'm full of love, and 
A lot of it is illicit. Listen, uh... <laughs> I'm a little overcome uh, on kind of Fred's appearance, <laughs> I and I blame. beg the community's pardon for these marvelous subconscious, uh, licit, uh, there's no such word, but from now on there will be licit uh, <laughs> remarks. Fred, I'm awfully tired, I I'm sick, and I'm done in. It was a hard day. Oscar, you're the strongest man I know. Well, the strongest man who's dying. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thanks for that vote of confidence. <laughs> we left out uh, in our reminiscences about great musicals. Actually, I was in a picture in which you starred called Bandwagon that was my favorite and the sophisticated favorite of all people uh, who know, as they say in commercials, and the New York critics, in their reviews, consider it the best musical ever made, although it didn't come up to the Los Angeles as paper standards. Uh, well, let's talk. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, that was Arthur, Arthur Freed, my, my Arthur's Freed. Uh, you know, I did so many pictures with Arthur, and he was marvelous to me. Did six? Quite, quite a lot. And, I did uh, four. Well, that's right. And they were all mm -hmm. great. Yeah, well, he's, he's the best producer of musicals in history. Well, he's a marvelous producer. But and let's then, start uh, out Vince. Oh, Vince, Vince, well, Vince uh, directed that one, yeah. Well, Vince Minnelli. Minnelli, Minnelli, Minnelli. Minnelli. Yeah, he, he's wonderful. And, of course, Sid Charisse was in that, and, uh, wow, what a dancing gal. I did Sid, a scene yeah. with her in Van Wagen where she ran off stage. It wasn't used in the picture. And we did 18 takes, and I was supposed to uh, check her e exit uh, for a scene. And we did it 18 times. I was quite ill at the time. And uh, no. I never was so injured in my life. She's like, I am. <laughs> I don't think she likes me anymore. She's one of the nicest people I've ever met, oh, one of the most beautiful. But I said about the Academy Awards, about I was only just saying about Tony Martin, I said he behaved like a Greek god, but I happen to know he's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he won't uh, forgive me, but I hope he does. Uh, while we're on the subject uh, of pictures, you did a great picture for Freed, which we haven't discussed, called Easter Parade that Irving Berlin. Road. And let's do a little nice bit about Judy Garland. Oh, Judy. Oh. I, I don't think it's very, very necessary to talk about Judy's talent. I think everyone recognizes that. And, uh, well, she, she's just, just great. And I, I guess she'll probably be, be uh, starting again soon. I hear she's been ill again. She's uh, much better. She's better. That's good. She's here and much better. And tell about the marvelous tramp number you did with her in Easter Parade. Uh, that was, um... We were a couple of swells, I think it was called, yes. Yeah. I'm a few bars. I don't remember. Oh, dear. No, you really... Go ahead. You see, you're ringing this in on me now. Uh, we talked about 8,000 things, and this is the 8,001. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Um, it was by Berlin. It's just I can't remember the, the thing. It's just like being on a, on a quiz show now, you know? I can't yeah. remember anything, and I know it backwards. Have you had shock treatments, too? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There was one song that Fred sang. Yeah. Uh, in a picture with Jane Powell, I remember. Royal Wedding. And it was a darling number. I was actually mad about it. it how can the you believe title. me when I... How can you believe me when I said you... Well, how can I... Well, what is how it? could you believe me when I say I love you when, you know, I'm... The biggest, the biggest liar, liar in the world. In the world. <laughs> I've been a liar yeah, all my life. Right. Huh? I had you know that, Lloyd Thatcher, in a white front store where the greatest liars of our time and I'd rather have him. <laughs> I know that. Well, you came through. Our show was bothering. <laughs> Not much, but a little. We were all losing our alleged memories. <laughs> Except me. I was filled with marvelous thoughts about myself while you two cavorted. <laughs> <laughs> Just change the subject as clumsily and as quickly as I can. You mind if I stretch? <clears throat> let's get stand up. Oh, let's all stretch. How about a little yoga breathing? And all of the, all of the, the yeah. and I used to naturally stay there day and night for years. This is long before I was married. And one night I upset her and she said, I would like to, uh, I would like you to leave the house. You've been insulting and ruined so far. And I felt badly about it and I got up and I started to leave. And I suddenly turned back. I said, but Leonor, I have no place to go. And I sat there for the next 20 years. <laughs> uh, I'd like to do a song, you to do a song, by Jerome Kern marvelous composer. He was difficult, wasn't he? In a person. You insist that he was difficult, Oscar. Now, honestly, I don't think that uh, that I found him so difficult. He wasn't. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't well, think I so. Why he was difficult? In what way? He never was with me. I adored him and idolized him. He was the first. He's the leader 
of modern show music, before George, you know, and before Cole and Rogers and so forth, he was number one. He began the whole thing, mm -hmm. as you know. I never saw the Princess shows, did you? I um, saw one. I think it was, oh, oh boy. He didn't do what that. What was though. in there? Oh, yeah, he did yeah. What was in that? Babes in the Woods or something. <laughs> you started in show business, how old? Five and a half. Five and a half? So how old were you, dude? No. Four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, you're back in it. Yeah. Uh, how old were you? When I went in show business? Uh -huh. 45, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was a boy wonder. Uh, <laughs> I never thought we'd play plays in the woods. You know, George, uh, Gershwin taught me this. When I was young, and I didn't know much car. How wonderful you are. They didn't believe me. They didn't believe me. Your eyes, your lips, your nose, your hair are in a class beyond compare. You're the loveliest girl I've ever seen. And when I told them, and I'm certainly going to tell them, that you're the one someday whose bride will be. Well, you'll never believe me. They'll never believe me. That from this great big world you've chosen me. Holy smokes, I didn't know I was going to get away from that. Well, I, I must tell you one thing. I was surprised. Tell them, I, uh, tell them how we never mentioned this song once in no. all the years we've known each other until now. But it's funny. The reason I happened to remember that because I did it in vaudeville w with my uh, sister Adele when I was a little kid. I loved the song. It's a marvel. I can't sing you know, it You know, wrote the lyric, like Michael it. Rourke. No. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you know, he Kern did these famous shows with uh, Wodehouse and Bolton, you know, mm -hmm. and Mr. O'Rourke. I never knew him, naturally. Uh, I was a kid. Mike, I was a kid so many years. Uh, let's talk about your sister, Adele, who was a, one of the greatest comedians in the history of American theater. And she was adored, idolized, and she gave such happiness and merriment to everybody. Uh, and an utterly delightful person. And uh, where is she now, Phil? Well, Adele lives in, in uh, Virginia most of the time, and she, she has a place in Jamaica. She goes there in the wintertime, and she, goes, she lives in New York, too, some of the time. She's, very happy, and uh, she's still the great, great Bill. Oh yeah, I saw that thing. <laughs> there oh, is, uh, there are two uh, significant pieces of news this week yeah. in this climactic world of ours. One is a piece about me in Time magazine, in the, which I found a study in pernicious, uh, one less than one-dimensional characterization of me. I, uh, everybody's pleased with the piece, and the boy who wrote it, Bob Jennings, is a marvelous bright fellow. He's 28 years old. He's quite brilliant, and he introduced me to the subject of Spain, incidentally. But uh, this picture of Adele Astaire by Kokoschka, a great German painter who was once married to Alma Mahler, who married four geniuses. Uh, not one. I wasn't one of them. Uh, this is Adele, painted by Kokoschka. What does it say? Well, it's only the topic of Donald Schoenberg, the great composer, uh, whose teacher uh, he, I studied with him for many years. Uh, it would take two evenings to remember. As, as, I mean long, to, yeah. as long as you bring this thing up, I'll tell you what it is. This, this fellow, Kokoschka, is a great man, period, I guess, isn't he? You know? He is, yeah. All right. Well, he goofed in this painting, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, tw in 1926, my sister and I were doing Lady Be Good in London, and this fellow came around backstage to visit us with a, with a man named Hugh Walpole, an eminent writer. And they all about they, you all, Paul. Well, he was the hero of Cakes and Nails. Not the hero, but the heavy uh, that Mom, uh, uh, Somerset Mom, declined to affirm, but it's true. Well, that's right. Now, where was I? Oh, 1926 yeah. was Adele. Okay, well, now this fellow came around, and he wanted, he decided he wanted to paint Adele. He was an admirer of hers, and, she, and so forth. Well, she agreed to paint, to sit for this painting, and he, he kept her for four weeks on this thing, and she finally felt she, he would never show it to her. And ten years later, she said, uh, she, first of all, she told me then, she said, this fellow's a nut. She said, I don't get it. I don't know what he's, what he's all about. 
He purrs like a kitten whenever he's painting me. He's driving me crazy. And so she quit and, and walked out on it. And then, 10 years later, she saw a, a, a black and white photograph of this thing. And she said, good gosh, is that what he did? Now, 30 years later, whatever it is, this is one of the greatest paintings that this character has ever done. And, and uh, I think it's the most unattractive looking thing of a pretty girl I've ever seen. But she's my sister. <laughs> While we're at it. Anyway, she doesn't mind it. I'm the one man. who minds it. I'll tell you that. Uh, June, will you read some of the more salient and uh, amusing, oh, read the whole thing about me and time. Oh, really? Is he ready for my turn? Yeah, friend and I will rest a little bit. All right. Uh, it's titled, uh, Frenzied Road Back. His hands noodle out a few bars from Gershwin's concerto in F, and the man in the crumpled suit says, this is Oscar Levant speaking. It's an identification that I have to make because I suffer from amnesia. Twice a week in a pint-sized studio at Hollywood's KCOP TV, Levant snaps at his guests, snarls at the camera, squints at the 20 outpatients in the audience, uh, where am I? <laughs> Sneers at his sponsors, scowls at the world, sits at his piano, twitching, squirming, blinking, playing. Says he, I'm a study of a man in chaos in search of frenzy. Only eight weeks old, the Oscar Levant show is a smash hit, and the networks are angling for Oscar's talents. Let me know when you want me to stop. No, go ahead. It's very uh, comforting. First, I can rest, and second, it's all about me. <laughs> After a 1952 heart attack, Levant's road went downhill. He tried recuperating with a bottle, but this is not true. One year, I drank at the doctor's orders, and it was very boring, so I drank more. But it never suited me. It's a very dull uh, uh, avocation. I never was a drunkard. No, you really weren't. Yeah, uh, he got encircled with more... But I did drink, and uh, I want to well, clear doctor, up Bob Jennings' role. Right. I said I drank for a year. Drank. I carried a bottle around. Yeah. <laughs> at the instigation of... His, uh, uh, he tried recuperating with a bottle, which we've just discussed, got encircled with more troubles, at the instigation of a psychiatrist who obviously hated me. He was tossed out of the Musicians' Union for missing concerts, and though quickly reinstated, I went on drugs because I was deeply hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I went on drugs? I had been a good... Thank you, Mr. Bethro. I had been a good union Wait, man. I want to say about drugs, it's the worst indulgence. It solves nothing. It absolutely solves nothing. And stay away from it. Okay. <laughs> After a last concert at, Ma uh, at Manhattan's Lewisham Stadium in July 1953, Levant packed off to a Pasadena sanitarium. In you packed me off. I didn't even know where I was. I know. Well, somebody had to do it. Um, in 1956, he managed to last 18 weeks on a Los Angeles KNXT show, Words About Music, then got a reprimand for making anti-Nixon quips and quit in disgust. Last February... You know that Nixon has chosen me his successor? <laughs> Last February, after more than a year in four sanitariums, he got a call from KCOP, co-owned by Bing Crosby, and was offered a temporary job filling in for ailing jokester Tom Duggan. Ten days later, Levant had a show of his own. The Oscar Levant show repelled some it was people... three days later. Three days later, Oscar Levant had... Uh, uh, but Oscar Levant show repelled some people and delights most. Dro Who do I repel? I, how can I repel anybody? Take a vote. <laughs> Who do I repel? Be honest. Uh, please be honest. Ah, uh, no one. They love you. I obviously repel a lot of people, and I'm, <laughs> well, nobody I, has to. I, I, I couldn't be more contrite. I wish I could please everybody, everybody, but if you do please anybody, you're nothing. You have to have some point of view. Everybody doesn't have to like it. <laughs> that's a, that's a lovely vote of confidence. Uh, Levant has... No money. I don't get paid. <laughs> I'm here as a religious leader. Uh... <laughs> Levant has corralled both main stars and intellectuals as his guests. Eddie Cantor was followed by Christopher Isherwood, Adolf Maju by Aldous Huxley, Red Skelton by Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas. His subjects run the gamut from highly intellectual topics to brutal digs. Isherwood told him, quote, you are, you are like a Dostoevsky character, completely unmasked at all times. Oscar discusses his illness, brings his hand to his heart and says, if I didn't hold it, my heart would fall out. <laughs> he has a knack for sharp, snide, ad-lib remarks on just about anything, including... It's not true. It's not... Including his sponsors. Not true. I'm supine in my adoration for my sponsors. <laughs> Quote... 
Now for the most important climactic moment of the show, Queen Bee, which cures everything except me. <laughs> Unquote. <laughs> On Leonard Bernstein. I don't think as much of him as he does. I don't think of mu as much of him as he does. Lenny has no humor about his egomania. I do. On love, quote, because of my attentiveness to other women on the show, my wife told me I ought to get a divorce and settle down. <laughs> Unquote. On theology, an atheist is a man with no invisible means of support. Unquote. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Never before has KCOP had so much mail. Some call it the Six Six Show. But most rejoice at rediscovering Oscar, the dictionary, and good books as well. Says Huxley, quote, he represents intelligence, something all of us can use more of. But for Oscar, 51, success is hard. Don't say that! <laughs> and I hate the word. Functioning is the important thing. That's Success is very unimportant, and it's momentary, and it, uh, I'm very bitter about that You're word. You're right. He uh, is off the bottle. Quote, what I don't... bottle? <laughs> I don't drink liquor. I don't like it. It makes me feel good. <laughs> but his psychiatrist sessions went up from one to three a week. He needs help. <laughs> I have to interrupt this uh, wonderful essay into poetry by introducing Lloyd Saxon, who helped us out. What did you say before? What did you help us out with? Uh, the oh, lyrics. How would you know that? I was by Alan Lerner and Burton Lane. Oh, I've heard that record many, many times. Well, I and Jane Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, talk about the wonderful buys. Uh, how, do you have color television sets? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, go ahead. I don't need it. I'm, as I often say, I'm off color in television. <laughs> I want to be as terse and in, uh, in a hurry because I want to take advantage of Mr. Seth's presence. Uh, would you please come back, Fred, and uh, do this wonderful song that you identify with, a fine romance from springtime. I saw it. Swing the first pre swing, swing time. What did I say? Swing. Swing time. Oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're awfully okay. funny. You're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be poised. That's the word they use, and lovely. <laughs> anyway, I went to the preview of this picture with George Gershman after he arrived, and uh, it's, it was a, one of the best scores I ever heard in theater or, and it's my daughter Marcia's favorite song of yours. You're calmer than the seals in the Arctic Ocean. At least they flap their fins to express emotion. A fine romance with no clinches. A fine romance with no pinches. You're just as hard to land as the Ile de France. I haven't got a chance. This is a fine romance. A fine romance with no kisses. A fine romance, my friend. This is. There are some other words. I'll try to think of them. Da 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 da. A fine romance, you won't nestle. A fine romance, you won't wrestle. You never give the orchids, I send a glance. No, you want cactus plants. This is a fine romance. Right away, uh, with no waiting, uh, you were in a show that opened the Alvin Theater by George and Ira Gershwin, produced by Ernest Freely, called Funny Face. 
And one of the great songs of that show was <clears throat> wonderful. Did you sing it? Uh, well, in the, no, in the, in the stage show, I didn't sing it. My sister sang it, Adele sang it. Thirty years later, I sang it in the picture. The same name, but a different story. The one I did with Audrey. Well, 30 years from now, you'll sing it with my daughter, Amanda. <laughs> should care for me. Sawful nights, sparrow nights, what I love to see. You've made my life so glamorous. You can't blame me for feeling amorous. Oh, it's wonderful. It's marvelous that you should care for me. That you should care for me. It's awful night. It's awful night. It's paradise. It's paradise. What I love oh. to see. Oh, you've made my life so glamorous. Now you can't blame me for feeling amorous. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's marvelous. It's marvelous. That you should care. Wonderful, that was wonderful. And uh, Fred, you really are one of the very few singers who sing the lyrics correctly. Thank you because Ira Gershwin gets very annoyed when singers say, It's wonderful, it's marvelous, because it's written, It's wonderful, it's marvelous, yeah. softly and I, you know. And it Incidentally, was. in that show, you uh, there was a song which appeared in your picture 30 years later. Gee, I wish I could be in a picture 30 years later. <laughs> he loves that, she loves that. You like it? Well, actually, uh, it was never one of my favorites of all, of all you know. We, Don't we mind. I was very objective about I his lyrics. You know, the biggest hit song for ourselves is concerned was Long Ago and Far Away with Jerome Kern, and he's never been pleased with his lyric, although it's, I think, the most beautiful tune oh, I've written. Marvelous. Well, this one is, if I, you know, I, it's, uh, it just wasn't one when of my favorites. But you sang this. I love your funny yeah. face. Why am I singing? Why don't you? <laughs> I like it. I like what you did. I want to do, uh, to correct a uh, historical impression that has been misleading lately. There's one of the greatest songs ever written called Foggy Day in London Town by George and Ira Gershwin, <coughs> which many people think that Frank Sinatra introduced. But actually, we will revert to the classical tradition. Mr. Astaire introduced this in a picture, I think it was Damsel in Distress, was it? Yeah. And although Mr. Sinatra's rendition is quite lovely and acceptable, oh, terrific, my God, it's yeah. still not as good as yours. Oh no, wait and it's a great. Minute, Oscar, there is it's great. Lyrics. But restore the right lyrics because he has already heard from Roger Kipling's daughter, and uh, although it's a minor infraction, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. You want to do let's do it by Copa? No, <laughs> we'll leave that for Noel Coward, who needs it badly. Museum had lost its charm. How long, I wondered, would this thing last? But the age of miracles hadn't passed. For suddenly I saw you there. And through foggy London town, the sun was shining everywhere. me down. I viewed the morning with alarm. 
The British Museum had lost its charm. How long, I wonder, could this thing last? But the age of miracles hadn't passed. For suddenly, I saw you there. And through foggy London town, the sun was shining everywhere. I'm quite, I'm quite serious about the, the terrible emotion, not terrible, it's a very exciting emotion I have with Mr. Astaire, and uh, I'm delighted to have this interrupted, I want to recover, with a delightful, charming lady who has a wonderful product, Ms. Roma Lynn. Thank you. Thanks. I'm waiting for him to get back. I am. Uh, so am I. <laughs> and I'll buy your product. Uh, I'm going on pay television because I've gotten a lot of letters saying they would be glad to contribute uh, for me to be piped into just hospital. What am I talking about? All right. <laughs> we don't have much time, Fred. So uh, let's pay a tribute to a great, great, great songwriter. I never talk about him. I don't know why. But Cole Porter, oh, you say something and we'll do night and day well, what you introduce. Uh, I, I, you know what I think, Cole? I've had a lot of very very wonderful things with him. He's written so many things that I've, I've worked with and, and uh, well... There's great, nobody, great. no matter who, and there are five great composers. Yeah. They're all equally great. It's silly to compare them because the only reason they're great is they're different, so how can you compare them? It calls one of them. That's right. <laughs> Night and day Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are, I think of you. Night and day. I'm sorry to interrupt, Fred. We're right. going off the air, and as a sign off, I'd like you to do, I'm sorry about that song, but they can't take that away from me, or from you, from me, from Joan. Uh, do it uh, as a sign off. The way you wear your hat. The memory of all that No, no, they can't take that away from me The way your smile just beams The way you sing off key The way you haunt my dreams No, no, they can't take that away from me We may never, never meet again on the bumpy road to love Still I'll always, always Keep the memory of